Hey Grow Fam, it is Good Friday and just wanted to take a few minutes to honor this night with all of you, our, our church family, our community. There is no great Sunday without a Good Friday. And we're actually going to be doing communion, so you may want to get your elements ready. And I truly believe that when we do communion together to honor this night, that we're going to experience the power of God, as we always do when we take communion together. What I find that's interesting about uh, the conversations that Jesus had that night before he was taken, all of the conversations, well, most of the conversations really had nothing to do with what was about to happen with him being taken to be crucified. Rather, the conversations that he had with them were more to prepare them for what to do after the resurrection, what would be available, how they were to conduct their lives after the resurrection. It's interesting. He didn't focus on the cross. He was focusing on after the resurrection. For example, he has a foot washing service. He's up there in that upper room. He takes the time to do this, such a serving position of bending down and washing their feet. And what was he saying to them in that? Listen, you know, when I'm resurrected and we're past all of this, this is how, this is the attitude that you need to have that you are to serve one another because most of the time we're wanting to be served and we have the tendency to want to rule over others. He's saying, no, 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 I want you to be like me. I came to serve and do this. Let that attitude be in you towards each other to serve. And again, this is for after the resurrection. And then he talked a lot about the indwelling Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, the helper, the one who would live on the inside of us. And I love how the Apostle Paul, he says in Colossians, Christ in you, the, the, the hope or the potential of glory, of tremendous power. What? He would be available after the resurrection. And then he talked about abiding with him. In John chapter 15, about abiding in the vine, that after the cross, it's going to be vital that we continue to stay so connected to him in, in our communion, in our praying, in our spending time in his word. So he was giving us instructions, not so much about the cross, but more how we are to live our lives after the cross. Because really the goal was that we would continue doing the same things that he did after he would leave. And, and I know that I'm talking to a group of people. Who you, you, this burns in your heart. You have the desire to be as he was in the earth. I love that other promise in First John where it talks about as he is, so are we in the earth. If it wasn't for the cross and the resurrection, that scripture could not be available for us. And then he did communion with them. And it's interesting, they all thought they were having their Passover meal, which it was, but actually Jesus was closing out one covenant and he was starting a new covenant. And look at what he says. We're gonna read this together. It says, for I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so today, what do we remember? Wow, Jesus' body was broken. Why was it broken? Was it just to pay for our sins? Mm -mm. It was for our healing. And we know that based on the scriptures, because it says by his stripes, all of those whippings, we are healed, not going to be healed. So in the, in the breaking of his body, he was purchasing for us to experience his healing power while we're in our earth suit on earth. It's not needed for heaven. There's already healing in heaven. Oh, in his goodness and his mercy, he provides the opportunity while we're still in our physical bodies to experience his healing power. Because God cares about the soul, 
the body, and the spirit. He came to redeem all of it. And so tonight we're going to take communion. We're going to first take the bread. And this is an opportunity. We've been experiencing this. I experience this privately. We experience this as a church. That when we take communion, it's an opportunity to release our faith in what he said. He said by his stripes we're healed. He said that his body was broken for us. So we're going to take him at his word. And you may be watching and you may be experiencing something going on in your physical body right now. This is your opportunity. In simple faith, childlike faith, say, Jesus, I believe tonight that as I take communion, as I remember that your body was broken for me, I'm going to receive a touch from you. What he bore, I need not bear. So I'm going to pray and then we'll take together. Father, I thank you and I praise you that you are so faithful to your word. Lord, I'm taking this communion with my eyes fixed on what you have promised, believing that as I take whatever limitation is going on in my body, whatever Whatever it is, it has to bow to your healing power. I believe, God, that as I take, your power is released and moving into every part of our bodies. In Jesus' name, let's take together. Father, I'm just so grateful so grateful that the power of the Holy Spirit, even as your word declares, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and quickens our mortal bodies. Father, I thank you for quickening bodies. I thank you that your power is moving in the cells and the organs and the tissues, in the muscles and the joints. I thank you, Father God, whatever uh, imbalances, whatever limitations at your power right now is manifesting in physical bodies in Jesus' name. All forms of inflammation that are causing problems in physical bodies. Father, I thank you even now for your power that's dealing with that in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, whether there's blood clots, cancers, whether there's something going on with your pancreas, something going on in, if there's any kind of internal bleeding, Oh, Father, I thank you. Even things happening in uh, the small intestine, in the large intestine, I thank you, Father, right now for your power that is manifesting in every single person who is listening, that there's no distance in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're having your way according to the Word of God. In Jesus' name. And then it goes on and it says, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant. There's something new coming. I'm coming into a new covenant with creation. A new covenant in my blood. Now, why is that so important? Because back then, covenants were done, could only be ratified, could only be set in motion by the shedding of blood of an animal. This was the shedding, shed blood of Jesus. He was giving his life, offering his life as the sacrifice, as the payment for the sins committed by all humanity. He took upon himself what should have been on us. So good, so faithful. And when he said covenant in my blood, that group that was listening, that understood what that meant, that there was this literally becoming one, whatever it is that belonged to God, that belonged to Jesus, would now belong to his people. It's a, a unity, a oneness that we can't even comprehend. And yet it's been made available because of the blood of Jesus. He's saying, I'm coming into a covenant with you where there is no separation where what I am, who I am, is now you. It's all available for you. And so then it says, this do as often as you drink it, what? In remembrance. What are we remembering? I'm in a covenant with the living God. 
I don't have to tolerate anxiety and fear. I don't have to doubt whether or not God loves me. He proved his love by dying on the cross for me. We have to literally cast down those wild imaginations that are right from the pit of hell that that try to dissuade us, that try to bring us in a place of unbelief in the goodness of God. Tonight we remember, oh, he's good. He proved his goodness. He proved his love in giving his life so that we could be in this covenant relationship. So let's thank God. Let's celebrate that right now. Father, we just thank you for covenant. We thank you for your shed blood. Thank you, Jesus. You died for us before we even had a chance to say that we love you. You loved us first. And I thank you for that, God. I thank you for forgiveness. I thank you for relationship. I thank you for purpose, God. Even tonight, Lord, as as we're doing this together, I thank you that you are reinvigorating in everyone who's listening, purpose, your love, your plans, your ways, that you, Holy Spirit, just burn in our hearts that together we would build your kingdom on earth and not ours. Tonight we're taking this in faith, solidifying we live and move and have our being in you because of covenant. We love you, Jesus. Let's take together. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So this Sunday is Easter. Again, there's no great Sunday without Good Friday. And so come on out. Let's celebrate together uh, what God has done through his son, Jesus. Let's expect miracles. Let's expect people to give their lives to Jesus and start fresh in him. So looking forward to seeing you this Sunday.